The word for you today, we're continuing on relationships. Today, it's about two men, David and Jonathan. This is before David was King David. In 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 17, is a verse that has been taken out of context. It's been used in a lot of different ways, explained in a lot of different ways. But let's see what it has to say to us about relationships. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. Jonathan is the son of King Saul. King Saul has tried to kill David because David is a threat. He sees David as a threat to King Saul being king of Israel. Even though David has done nothing but help him. Jonathan and David have this conversation. Jonathan says, no, my dad's not trying to kill you. And David says, yes, he is. So Jonathan devises a plan to determine if his father's trying to kill him or trying to kill David or not. In this passage, they're affirming their friendship. What they're saying is, okay, either way, we are still tight. We're still friends, right? Well, listen to this verse again. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him because he loved him as he loved himself. The homosexual agenda uses this verse to promote their lifestyle. Are they right? Well, first of all, the word for love in this verse is not one that's used for sexual activity. The, word, the Hebrew word there that's used for love can be used for uh, a parent's love for a child. It can be used for loving uh, bread. It can be used for, in a marriage relationship, it can be used in all different ways. It's, it's not just one particular one. So it, you can't identify it in any one particular area. Also, the Bible consistently condemns homosexuality. Genesis 19, 1 to 26, Leviticus 18, 22, chapter 20 and verse 13, Romans 1, 22 to 28, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 1 Timothy 1, 10 are some of the verses. And I know I ran through those quickly, but it's the Bible, why would the Bible condemn homosexuality, but then affirm Jonathan and David having this relationship? It just, it just wouldn't, wouldn't, that wouldn't be consistent. And then, yes, John, David and Jonathan expressed their love for each other, but the deepest expressions of love are never expressed physically. Think about that for a moment. The deepest expressions of love are never expressed physically. It goes much deeper. When you truly love somebody, there is a soul love for one another that doesn't, it's, it's not expressed physically. Physically, God created us to, as, as men to have men friends and women friends. And some of those relationships are so close. You take men who have gone into battle together. They are tight. They are so, so tight. Because they have faced life and death before. They had to have each other's back. And there's a, there's a bond there. There's closeness there that I guarantee you that them and their wives probably don't even have. But it didn't mean they had sex together. Of course not. So, and the last thing is that Satan has perverted God's plan in so many different ways. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Well, Satan has his own unholy trinity. He, he, he just takes one thing after another thing after another thing. And marriage is another area where he, he perverts it. And sexuality. God gave us a great thing in sex. But Satan perverts it into something ugly and something dirty. So let's, what can we learn from Jonathan and David in this passage of scripture about friendships? Let's just pick a couple of things. One is sacrifice. Jonathan, when, when David killed Goliath and then other times, Jonathan gave him some of, his clothes, some of his clothes and also some of his military gear. Why? Well, out of, out of respect for him, out of admiration, and sometimes David needed that. David needed it. In return, David agreed to take care of Jonathan's family when he became king. There was sacrifice. Both of them sacrificed something. Loyalty. When Jonathan discovered that his father, King Saul, was actually trying to kill David, he confronted his, his dad. 
said, Dad, why are you doing this? David has done nothing to, to endanger you whatsoever. Why are you doing this? And then David, later after King Saul and Jonathan were killed, he took care of Jonathan's family when he became king. Remember Mephibosheth, relative of, of King Saul's? David went and found him and brought him to his table and took care of him because of that covenant he had made with Jonathan. Sacrifice and loyalty. Commitment to, in friendships involve those two things. Sacrificing some things, maybe we feel like doing something, maybe we don't, but we do it for the better good of that person. And then loyalty. Staying loyal to them. Man was writing, a man named Matthew was writing, he said that he was on his way home from work one day when a friend came to his mind. And he hadn't seen this friend in a while, and, and something just told him to drive over by his friend's house and stop in and check on him. So he did, he drove over, pulled up, and he went up, and the house was dark, and he knocked, rang the doorbell, and finally his friend came to the door, and his friend looked awful. Looked like he hadn't showered, he was dressed sloppily, uh, as he went in, the house was a wreck, it was a mess. And he said, hey, uh, why don't you go get a shower and I'll order a pizza. And I'll just kind of tidy things up a little bit while you're taking a shower. And his friend said, no, no, you don't. He said, no, you'll feel better after a shower. So his friend, his friend finally agreed. So he went took a shower. He ordered pizza. Started picking things up. Pizza came. His friend got out of the shower. They, ate, they sat out on the porch and ate pizza together and talked. And eventually his friend confessed to him that that night he was going to kill himself. He was so down, he was so discouraged, he was so depressed, he was going to kill himself. But now he sees he has a reason to live. Sacrifice. This friend. Sacrifice time. Things he was going to do, he changed to go see this friend friend that he didn't know was in the bad shape that he was in. Loyalty. He spent time with him. Is there any friend that you can think of? Let me back up. Always be open to if God places a friend in your mind. God puts somebody on your mind, check on them, because there's a reason God is putting that person on your mind. Maybe they need something, and maybe they need it from you. Because why else would God be putting them in your mind? Why did God put his friend on Matthew's mind? Because God knew that Matthew needed to go to his friend. He knew his friend was in need. Friends, we all like friends. Are we willing to be that friend? Commitment to a relationship involves sacrifice. It involves loyalty. Be a good friend. Have a good day.